Are you struggling to let go of anger and resentment towards someone who has hurt you? In this video, we delve into the profound teachings of Buddhism on forgiveness, offering you practical wisdom and guidance on how to find true freedom through forgiveness. Step 1. Stay calm and keep a clear mind. In Buddhism, the mind is compared to a lake. When the lake is still, you can see clearly to its depths. But when it's agitated, the surface becomes murky and it's impossible to see beneath. When our minds are agitated by emotions like anger, hurt, or resentment, we can't see the true nature of things. We lose our ability to respond wisely and compassionately to the situation at hand. Buddhism offers us the tools of mindfulness and meditation. Mindfulness is the practice of being fully present and engaged with our current experience without judgment. It involves observing our thoughts and emotions as they arise, without getting caught up in them. When we're hurt by someone, our initial reaction might be to lash out in anger or to withdraw in sadness. Mindfulness allows us to pause and observe these reactions without being overwhelmed by them. We can acknowledge our pain, but choose not to let it control our actions. Meditation is a practice that cultivates mindfulness. It involves focusing the mind on a single point, such as the breath, and gently bringing it back whenever it wanders. This helps to calm the mind and develop concentration, making it easier to stay mindful in our daily lives. Meditation can help us to stay calm and maintain a clear mind, even when we're dealing with difficult emotions. It can provide a space for us to process our pain and to cultivate a compassionate understanding of the situation. Loving kindness is the wish for all beings to be happy. Compassion is the wish for all beings to be free from suffering. Empathetic joy is the ability to rejoice in the happiness of others. And equanimity is the ability to maintain a balanced mind, regardless of the situation. By cultivating these qualities, we can develop a heart that is open, compassionate, and resilient. We can learn to respond to hurt with understanding and forgiveness, rather than with anger and resentment. When we're hurt by someone, it can feel like the pain will last forever. But understanding impermanence can help us to see that this isn't the case. Our pain, like everything else, is temporary. It will change and eventually pass. This understanding can provide comfort in difficult times. It can help us to stay calm and maintain a clear mind, knowing that this too shall pass. Staying calm and keeping a clear mind is a crucial first step in the process of forgiveness. Step 2. Focus on the present. Leave the past behind. When someone hurts us, it's natural for our minds to dwell on the past, replaying the hurtful event over and over. We might find ourselves reliving the pain, the anger, the betrayal. But according to Buddhism, this is a form of suffering that we create for ourselves. The past is gone, and no amount of rumination can change what happened. Instead, it only serves to prolong our suffering. Buddha once said, The secret of health for both mind and body is not to mourn for the past, not to worry about the future, or not to anticipate troubles, but to live in the present moment wisely and earnestly. This teaching is particularly relevant when it comes to forgiveness. Focusing on the present moment allows us to see things as they truly are, without the distorting lens of past hurts. It enables us to respond to the current situation in a more balanced and compassionate way. When we live in the present, we can see the person who hurt us not just as the cause of our past pain, but as a complex, flawed human being, just like ourselves. But how can we cultivate this present moment awareness? One of the most effective ways is through mindfulness meditation. In this practice, we focus our attention on a single object, such as the breath, and whenever our mind wanders off to the past or the future, we gently bring it back to the present moment. Over time, this practice can help us become more mindful in our daily lives, enabling us to stay present even in difficult situations. Focusing on the present moment also means acknowledging and accepting our current feelings. If we're feeling hurt or angry, it's important to acknowledge these emotions rather than trying to suppress them. But at the same time, we should not let these emotions control us. Instead, we should observe them with mindfulness, understanding that they are temporary 
and do not define us. Focusing on the present moment also means seeing the person who hurt us as they are now, not as they were in the past. People can change, and holding on to a past image of someone can prevent us from seeing their growth and transformation. By focusing on the present, we can open ourselves up to the possibility of reconciliation and healing. It's important to note that focusing on the present does not mean ignoring or denying the past. The past has happened, and it has shaped us into who we are today. But instead of being trapped in the past, we can use it as a lesson, a guide for how to live more wisely in the present. By focusing on the present, we can let go of past hurts and open ourselves up to the possibilities of forgiveness and healing. Step 3. Express your love, yet assert your boundaries. Expressing your love can be as simple as wishing the person well, despite the harm they've caused. This isn't easy, especially when the pain is still fresh. But remember, this love isn't about approving of their actions. It's about recognizing their humanity and wishing for their well-being. This is a form of metta or loving kindness in Buddhism, a practice that can help us cultivate a boundless heart. Asserting your boundaries doesn't mean cutting the person out of your life, although in some cases that might be necessary for your safety and well-being. More often, it means setting clear expectations for how you want to be treated. It's about saying, I care about you, but I won't allow you to hurt me in this way. It's also important to remember that asserting your boundaries is not a form of punishment. It's not about retaliating or making the other person suffer. Instead, it's about protecting your own well-being and promoting a healthier relationship. In Buddhism, this balance between love and boundaries is embodied in the concept of wise compassion. This means acting with love, but also with wisdom. It's about understanding that true compassion sometimes requires us to set boundaries for our own sake and for the sake of others. Start by wishing yourself well, then extend this wish to someone you care about, then to someone neutral, and finally to someone who has hurt you. This is a traditional meta meditation practice. If someone hurts you, communicate your feelings to them. Be clear, calm, and assertive. Avoid blaming or criticizing Instead, focus on how their actions made you feel. Decide what behaviors you're willing to accept and what behaviors you're not. Communicate these boundaries clearly to the other person. Remember that you deserve to be treated with kindness and respect. If someone is hurting you, it's okay to protect yourself. If you are struggling to set boundaries, consider seeking help from a therapist or counselor. They can provide guidance and support as you navigate this process. Remember, Expressing your love and asserting your boundaries is a delicate balance. It's a process that takes time, patience, and practice. But with the guidance of Buddhist teachings, it's a process we can all embark on towards healthier relationships and inner peace. Hatred does not cease by hatred, but only by love. This is the eternal rule. Step 4. Choose to forgive. Forgiveness is a profound personal decision a conscious choice that reflects our commitment to inner peace and spiritual growth. It's not an easy step, especially when the hurt is deep, but it's a necessary one if we are to move forward on our spiritual journey. In Buddhism, the act of forgiveness is seen as a way to release ourselves from the bondage of anger, resentment, and hatred. These emotions, when harbored, can poison our minds and hinder our progress towards enlightenment. By choosing to forgive, we are choosing to let go of these toxic emotions and make room for more positive ones, such as compassion, understanding, and love. This doesn't mean that we condone their actions or that we forget what they did. Forgiveness is not about denying or excusing the hurt that was caused. It's about acknowledging the hurt, but choosing not to let it control us. It's about recognizing that holding onto anger and resentment only causes us more pain and choosing to let go of these emotions for our own well-being. Choosing to forgive also means choosing to see the person who hurt us in a new light. It means recognizing that they, like us, are imperfect beings who make mistakes. It means understanding that their actions may have been driven by their own pain, fear, or confusion, and that they too are deserving of compassion and understanding. This shift in perspective is not easy, 
but it's an essential part of the forgiveness process. It requires us to cultivate empathy and compassion, to put ourselves in the other person's shoes and see the world from their perspective. This doesn't mean we have to agree with their actions, but it does mean we have to try to understand why they acted the way they did. In Buddhism, this understanding is fostered through practices such as loving-kindness meditation, where we cultivate feelings of love and compassion for all beings, including those who have hurt us. By regularly practicing this meditation, we can gradually change our attitude towards the person who hurt us and make it easier to choose forgiveness. It's also important to remember that choosing to forgive is not a one-time decision. It's a choice we have to make over and over again, every time we're confronted with the memory of the hurt. This can be challenging, especially in the beginning, but with time and practice, it becomes easier. One way to make this choice easier is to remind ourselves of the benefits of forgiveness. Studies have shown that forgiveness can lead to improved mental and physical health, better relationships, and increased happiness. It can also help us grow as individuals, teaching us valuable lessons about empathy, compassion, and resilience. So when we choose to forgive, we're not just doing it for the other person. We're doing it for ourselves, for our own well-being and growth. We're choosing to let go of the burden of anger and resentment and to embrace the peace and freedom that comes with forgiveness. Choosing to forgive is a powerful act of self-love and spiritual growth. It's a decision that reflects our commitment to inner peace, compassion, and understanding. It's not an easy choice, but it's a necessary one if we are to heal from the hurt and move forward on our spiritual journey. Step 5. Forgiveness is for your inner peace, not theirs. When we're hurt by someone, it's natural to feel anger, resentment, or even a desire for revenge. These emotions can consume us, causing us to dwell on the past and preventing us from finding peace in the present. Buddhism teaches us that holding onto these negative emotions only causes us more suffering. It's like holding onto a hot coal with the intention of throwing it at someone else. In the end, it's us who gets burned. Forgiveness, then, is a way to release these hot coals. It's a way to let go of the anger and resentment, and in doing so, find peace. This doesn't mean that we're condoning the actions of the person who hurt us, or that we're forgetting what they did. It simply means that we're choosing not to let their actions continue to cause us suffering. It's important to note that forgiveness doesn't necessarily require reconciliation with the person who hurt us. Forgiveness is an internal process, something we do within ourselves. Reconciliation, on the other hand, is an external process that involves the other person. While forgiveness can sometimes lead to reconciliation, it's not always possible or even desirable, depending on the circumstances. In Buddhism, the focus is on our own inner peace rather than on the actions or reactions of others. This is because our inner peace is something we have control over, while we can't control how others behave or respond. By focusing on our own peace, we're taking responsibility for our own well-being, and we're not leaving it in the hands of others. This doesn't mean that forgiveness is easy. It can be a challenging and complex process, especially when the hurt is deep. But with patience, compassion, and a commitment to our own well-being, it's something we can all work towards. Remember, forgiveness is a journey, not a destination. It's a process that takes time and it's something we may need to work on continuously. But with each step we take, we're moving closer to inner peace. And in the end, that's what truly matters. When you're struggling to forgive someone who has hurt you, remember that you're doing it for your own peace, not for theirs. You're doing it to release the burden of anger and resentment and to make space for love, compassion, and tranquility in your life. And that's a journey worth embarking on. Step 6. Acknowledge mistakes are human, even your own. When we acknowledge that mistakes are a part of being human, we can begin to approach forgiveness from a place of understanding and empathy. This doesn't mean that we excuse or condone hurtful behavior, but rather that we recognize the fallibility inherent in all of us. We understand that the person who hurt us is not defined by their actions, just as we are not defined by ours. 
This understanding extends to ourselves as well. It's important to acknowledge and accept our own mistakes and to forgive ourselves for them. In Buddhism, this is seen as a crucial part of spiritual growth. When we can look at our own actions with compassion and understanding, we can learn from them and grow. One way to practice this is through the Buddhist concept of metta or loving-kindness meditation. In this practice, you extend feelings of love and compassion to yourself and then to others. This can help you to see yourself and others in a more compassionate light and to forgive both yourself and others for any mistakes. Another important aspect of acknowledging mistakes is taking responsibility for them. In Buddhism, this is seen as a crucial part of the path to enlightenment. When we take responsibility for our actions, we can begin to make amends for any harm we've caused, and we can work to prevent similar mistakes in the future. Taking responsibility is not the same as blaming ourselves. In Buddhism, there's a concept known as no self, which means that we are not defined by our actions. This means that while we can take responsibility for our mistakes, we don't have to identify with them. We can acknowledge that we made a mistake without seeing ourselves as bad or flawed. Acknowledging that mistakes are a part of being human is a crucial part of the process of forgiveness. It allows us to approach forgiveness from a place of understanding and empathy, and it helps us to forgive both others and ourselves. By acknowledging our mistakes, taking responsibility for them, and extending compassion to ourselves and others, we can move towards healing and growth. Forgiveness is a powerful tool that can bring peace and healing to both ourselves and others. By embracing the teachings of Buddhism, we can learn to let go of anger and resentment and cultivate compassion and understanding instead. Remember that forgiveness is a journey, not a destination, and it may take time and practice. But by practicing mindfulness and kindness towards ourselves and others, we can find true liberation and inner peace. Thank you for watching and may you find peace and forgiveness on your own journey.